I love Rust. It is one of my favorite programming languages, and that's why today I want to show you how you can develop and package Rust stuff with the power of Nix. Or more specifically, we will take a look at creating simple Rust dev shells, packaging Rust programs, and then at some useful tools that can further improve your Rust development experience within the Nix ecosystem. This video assumes you have a little bit of Nix, Flakes and Rust knowledge, but even if you don't, you'll easily be able to reproduce everything shown in this video by following it, so without further ado, let's start with making a Rust dev shell. So to begin, let's create a new directory for your Rust project and run the Nix flake init command to initialize a basic flake.nix file. Open it with your favorite editor, and inside, let's remove the default packages and define a basic shell output for your current system architecture. To do it, we first have to instantiate Nix packages, so let's do it inside the let and in syntax to reuse it later, and then grab the make shell function from there. This is basically how you make a shell for any language. Now to grab the Rust toolchain, we can get it straight from Nix packages, so let's define the build inputs, and inside, add some components like Cargo the package manager and Rust C the compiler at which point our shell is basically ready to use. But for actual development, let's also throw in Rust FMT, the formatter, Clippy the linter, and Rust Analyzer, the language server. The language server and some other tools require the Rust SRC path environment variable to be set, so let's set it by pointing it at Rust libsrc, and now we have an actual minimal Rust development shell we can use. Let's run Nix develop to activate it, and after a quick download, we can finally initialize our Rust project in this same directory with cargo in it. Just don't forget to stage your flake.nix and flake.log files with git, because cargo automatically initializes a git repo, so if you skip this step, your flake will stop working. Alright, at this point, the basic Rust environment is set up, and you can already begin developing Rust programs just like you would do on any normal Linux system, using your favorite code editor to edit the project and running it with cargo run. But before we proceed to packaging and the rest of the video, let me share a useful insight into Rust development with Nix. As you will notice that to interact with system components, many Rust crates rely on external libraries often written in C or C++. So if you try to install the glib crate for example, and then try to run your program, you will get an error saying that some libraries don't exist or are not linked correctly. And with traditional package managers, your next step would be to install the required libraries globally, polluting the user environment, but allowing your program to discover them with a tool called package-config. But Nix on the other hand aims to keep the user environment clean from any development tools and libraries, forcing us to declare all dependencies explicitly in the shell. Which is actually a really good thing, because in a moment it will make packaging the program basically effortless. But until then, all we have to do in our flake is to add the required library package to our shell, in this case it's also called glib, and make sure to include package config in the native build inputs. And now when we enter our shell with Nix develop, Nix will automatically run a special package config hook to expose the libraries from build inputs, allowing us to build the project no problem. Alright, so we have a shell, now let's imagine that we wrote some code and want to package our program. Fortunately for us, Rust is a modern language with an excellent package manager, so packaging Rust programs with Nix is surprisingly easy. Let's first try to do it directly in our flake, and to do so, all we have to do is declare the default package for our system architecture and assign it to the result of the packages.rustplatform.buildrustpackage function. Just like any other builder function, it requires a name, a source, and any dependencies your package may have. However, unlike other builder functions, this one also automatically downloads all the Rust crate dependencies for us. Big deal you might say, Cargo already does that when you build with it. But if you have ever tried to package things for Nix, you know that Nix does not allow any external downloads and Cargo is no exception. So in case of build Rust package, it is Nix that has to download and validate all the crates from your Cargo log not cargo. But as scary as that may sound, all that is required from us is to provide a cargo hash to validate the crates downloaded by Nix, so let's also add a cargo hash attribute for now assigned to fake hash, which we will replace with a real one once the build fails. And that's pretty much all that is required to build a Rust package, so let's run the next build command to try it out, and immediately get an error saying that our hash is incorrect, and giving us the correct one in return. Copy paste it in place of the fake hash, and boom, our package is ready to be built and ran. 
that was one way to do it, but during development, messing with cargo hash every time your dependencies change will get tedious, so build Rust package also lets us validate the crates with a cargo log file directly. So instead of using cargo hash, we can assign the cargo log dot log file attribute to the path to our log file. It is pretty useful for local and personal packages, but not so much for Nix packages, since you won't have the log file easily accessible there. All right, now that our package works, let's turn it into the standard call package pattern one. To do it, create a default dot nix file, move your shell expression there, and turn it into a function. Now we need to look for all the dependencies that we could grab from nix packages and request them in the function parameter. Then go back to your flake and replace the default package with a call package import. Don't forget to stage the default.nix file with git, or else your flake will ignore it, and what you are left with is a flake that works the same way as previously, and a default.nix file that you could later turn into a real nix packages package. Alright, all of that is great, but what you will soon notice when developing your package is abysmally slow build times because the build rust package function does not actually cache any build crates and instead rebuilds them every time your project changes. And while this works perfectly fine for Nix packages and projects you are not actively working on, for development you probably want a better solution. And one such solution is a Nix community project called Nairs. It comes in a form of a flake library and using it is that simple. All we have to do is add an input to our project's flake instantiate the library with a call package function of our Nix packages instance, and then replace our package with a nairsk.build package function call. Pass it the source and the dependencies, no need to worry about any cargo hashes, and now your package will fully utilize Nix's sandboxing and caching abilities, making your rebuilds fast. Super useful for personal projects, but obviously not so much for Nix packages, because you will not have it there. And now the last topic I want to quickly touch in this video is the alternative sources of the Rust toolchain, because Nix packages only packages the latest stable version at its own pace, so if you want to get a specific Rust toolchain version, or use beta or nightly for example, the most popular projects you want to look into are Phoenix and Rust overlay. The main difference between the two is that Phoenix is more lightweight, primarily focusing on providing the latest toolchain versions while allowing you to download a specific version yourself, and Rust Overlay provides a ton of versions out of the box, making it larger in size, but allowing you to pick an arbitrary version more easily. To use the first one, all we have to do is add Phoenix input to your flake, pass it to the outputs, and then instantiate the library for your current system architecture. And inside the library, you will find several prepackaged versions of the Rust toolchain, including stable for stable, beta for beta, minimal default and complete are profiles of nightly, and you can also pick a specific version with a Rust top manifest file, or by name, which will require a hash that you can get the same way as we did in the beginning. And afterwards, we can use the selected toolchain with make Rust platform to build a package just like we did earlier, or simply put the toolchain into a shell for development. And to use the Rust overlay, we once again simply need to add an input, pass it to the outputs, and then true to its name, use it as an overlay when instantiating our Nix packages. And afterwards, we will get access to the Rust bin attribute in our packages, from where we can take any version of the Rust toolchain, including specific version by version name, without the need for any hashes. So choose one and use it with make Rust platform to build a package, or put it into a shell for development. Both Phoenix and Rust Overlay can also be used with Nairsk by simply overriding its toolchain, and there's also a million different other ways to use one or another for specific use cases that could simply not fit into this video. So try both of them out and see which one works better for you. I personally prefer Phoenix for being more lightweight, but both of them are great. And now, I'd like to thank all the amazing people that support the channel and keep it going, and especially all the great monthly supporters, of which we have one new member, so thanks Broom for signing up. Your support is invaluable. And as always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.